Hi, everyone. Good evening or good morning. This is your market update. Friends, it's 1999, so get ready. If you were in fourth grade at the time, don't worry. Uh, it was a very interesting year, and we're going to get you up to speed on how today was like yesterday. So let's start with GAN Research and Development. We always like to share any research and development ideas with our friends who watch our live stream. GAN work, GAN's work has the number 44 as being very important throughout the way he divides up time and tries to find cool places where bottoms and top will appear. Okay. So 44 years ago, it was 1977. And in that year, something good and something bad happened, right? The bad was that there was a blackout in New York city and in the exact same city later in that year, uh, Reggie Jackson, a baseball player, ironically, whose number was 44, single-handedly won the World Series for the New York Yankees by hitting three home runs in one game, I believe, more than once. Now, if we take 42, 44, sorry, cut it in half and look at 22 years ago, that was 1999. Okay, in August of that year, there was a very sharp correction in stocks, particularly in internet stocks. And everyone thought the rally was over. However, once the rally ended, I'm sorry, once the decline or correction ended, the rally that happened in the fourth quarter of 1999 and the first quarter of 2000, so roughly five, six months, was massive. So everyone thought it was over and it wasn't. Sound applicable? A lot of GAN work at multiple levels. We won't get too deep into weeds, but there's a lot of work that suggests that August of 1999 is similar to July of this year. So let's just take a look at NASDAQ quick so I can give you the flavor of what it looked like and how vertical it went after that little correction in August that you can barely notice. At the time, it was like, oh my God, this is the top. And then it just went straight up. Again, sound familiar? Okay, let's take a look at Ethereum on a two-week bar chart. So we're going to break out with some interesting time frames to keep you on your toes for the stream. Okay, 22 bars from August of 2020, the start of like the last big DeFi rally, happens to be July 5th. That's tomorrow. So this is a season for ETH. And if you look at this two-week candlestick, Basically, over the last two weeks, you know, ETH has been hammered from, you know, 2,300 down to 1,700 and back. So this big correction that was supposed to mirror what happened in equities in 1999 may have already happened. Clearly puts you in dip buying mode going forward. Okay, looking at ETH versus Bitcoin. Yes, I know this is busy. There are a lot of lines, but here is the bottom line. At 0.06, Ethereum is too cheap versus Bitcoin. It should probably be at 0.09 or 0.12. And this GAN work indicates, especially since we're looking at a monthly chart, okay, if you go back to September of 2019, okay, it's been 22 months since the bottom of the overall altcoin market. All right, now let's look at Bitcoin on a two-week chart, okay? Again, look at these candlesticks. Look at these dojis. What's a doji? It's a stalemate, okay? Bitcoin is roughly 22 bars away from its bottom during the DeFi rally in July of 2020. Clearly, what's going on in Bitcoin has been sort of an overshoot that moved to like 28K. So if you're asking or wondering, should it go below 30? I don't think it's going to. I think the lows are in. I think the only question is, do you get red days or how many red days do you get between, say, now and the 17th to get involved? Okay, DeFi, all right? One thing that's funny about the live stream is it seems like I do the charts earlier in the day, and by the time I get to the stream, it's already happening. I guess that's a lot better than it not happening. All right, DeFi, this is DeFi perp. DeFi looks like it's picking up. It can go from 8,000 to 11,000. Okay, it's got a lot of free, it's got a lot of room to move based on these fancy GAN lines called GAN square. Okay, so DeFi can actually start to trend. It may not start real fast, 
but it's starting fast enough for us because it's be- today is a lot better than what we've been looking at. I mean, today looks spectacular with some coins up six to ten percent. Chain link. All right. Link Marines, where are you? Time to jump out of bed and hit the beach. Okay. Chain links GitHub development rate, according to a firm called Santimate. Hat tip to a friend of mine to finding this. The GitHub development rate at Chainlink is going north. That's the red line as price went down to 17. Okay. If you look at the technicals on Chainlink, this is a four day chart. So each bar is roughly a week. Chainlink has been in like a liquidity event paradise, meaning everyone's been selling and smart money's been buying below 20. Chainlink, in my view, non investment advice can head to 23. Um, it's endured a 44 day correction. So that number pops up again, again. And Chainlink feels like it wants to go to 60 or 100, right? A lot of people think, oh, you know, this coin's overvalued or that coin's overvalued. No one talks about Chainlink anymore. No one. And I think that this and maybe even XRP and some of these like, you know, and VeChain, right? So your chain links, your ripples, and your VeChain, these uh, these cryptos that have these ardent followings that aren't meme coins may come storming back. Okay, SNX, synthetics, all right? We discussed on Token Metrics TV how, you know, synthetics was coming back from 144-day bar correction and a 44-day correction. So the bottom line is there was two indicators for synthetics telling you that there was going to be a bottom between the 1st and the 8th of July. Looks like that bottom is coming in today. Again, we did this on Token Metrics TV. And take a look at where those stochastics are in the bottom right corner, turning up from very low levels, just like they were in November of 2020, which was the last time that DeFi was dead. Okay, perp. Yes, we're back on PERP. PERP survived the down move. It traded in this really weird range between 12 and 4. It's back at 8.6. Okay, if if PERP can get above 8.6 or 9, 12 is possible. So I don't see any reason why PERP can't go back up to the top end of the range. Okay, alpha. All right. You know, ouch. Yeah, I know. This still hurts, but it's starting to move. And I have a GAN inflection point that allows me to talk about it uh, sort of intelligently using charts, right? On July 8th, around 57 cents, it could be a big inflection point for alpha. If alpha starts rallying through that point near that time frame, that could be very constructive. Okay, speaking of very constructive, we have a low cap coin Monte Carlo Dex that one of our traders is looking at uh, you know, it was at 40, 17 is a resistance point. This is like something like 500 on the market cap chart. And like PERP, right, it's got a very interesting twist on this whole derivatives theme, just like synthetics. So just because the market went down 60% doesn't mean I'm giving up on the future of Wall Street on the blockchain. And MCB could be a part of that. And that, friends, is the market update. Token Metrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com.